Setting up a single router for your home is pretty simple. Most of the time, you just connect your modem to the router, plug in power, and go through a simple step-by-step -step wizard on your computer or smartphone. But what if one router isn't enough coverage? You could add an access point, wireless repeater, or range booster, but they're usually slower and a pain in the butt to configure. And that's where mesh Wi-Fi comes in. Mesh Wi-Fi is probably something that everyone has already used before. If you've ever connected to Wi-Fi on a school campus, convention center, or mall, then you've probably already encountered a mesh network without even realizing it. Let's explain it with a simple diagram. A traditional wireless network, like the one you'd find in your home, is arranged in a hub and spoke model. Your modem connects to your router, and then every other device connects directly to your router. It's a very simple and effective way at connecting a lot of devices all together. But as you can see, there's one very obvious bottleneck the router. Most routers can only handle one data stream at a time, which creates latency if a lot of devices are connected. Newer routers with fancy things like 4x4 antenna arrays and Moomimo help combat this with multiple data streams at once so the router can communicate between multiple devices simultaneously. Now that all sounds fine and dandy, and in fact, it works great. But that's only if you're using a single router. If you're in a large house or a small office building and the Wi-Fi signal from your router isn't strong enough, then that's where the headaches begin. As we mentioned earlier, devices like wireless repeaters and range boosters sound great on paper, but more often than not, they cause more problems than they solve. There are two main problems with these devices. Signal repeater devices usually create an additional network SSID based on the original network. This means that if you're roaming outside your router's range and into your repeater's range, then your devices probably won't be smart enough to automatically switch to the new stronger network. It'll probably linger on weak one bar connection and not really do anything unless you manually disconnect and reconnect. Some routers and repeaters let you set the same SSID, but because they're still technically two separate networks, you'll still run into the same problem unless you manually disconnect and reconnect. And if that wasn't bad enough, most repeaters operate on a single channel. And because of how a repeater works, it uses the same wireless network to receive your signal from your router, process it, then repeat it to your devices, effectively cutting your overall bandwidth in half. Some higher-end dual-band and tri-band routers will function as repeaters with multiple channels, but now you'll just be paying more than $200 just to run into the first problem we mentioned. This is where mesh networking comes in. This is the Netgear Orbi that's been sitting here the whole time, a tri-band home Wi-Fi system. The main difference between the Orbi and a standard wireless network is that the entire Orbi system acts as a single wireless network. It comes with a base station and an expansion satellite with the support for up to three satellites total. This means that you'll get the full speed and full functionality of your router no matter where you are or whichever satellite you're connected to. And because it's 2017 and we live in the future, the Orbi satellites are simply plug and play. To set up a home Wi-Fi network, all you need to do is connect the base station to your modem, run a step-by-step -step wizard on your connected computer or smartphone, and you're good to go. You don't have to manually assign IP addresses or rename network SSIDs. And to add a satellite, all you need to do is plug in power. That solves the first problem of repeaters. To solve the second problem, the Netgear Orbi assigns a 5 gigahertz network that is dedicated to just communication between the base station and the satellites. That means that you won't lose any bandwidth to your devices, but it also means that the tri-band Orbi functions more like a dual-band router with a single 2.4 gigahertz and a single 5 gigahertz channel available for use. And because of the way hybrid mesh networks work, you get the full benefits of Moomimo and beamforming on all all your satellites as well. Features that a range extender could only dream of. The Orbi RBK50 that we have here is rated for up to 5,000 square feet, but there are two other models that are smaller and offer a smaller range. We couldn't really properly test these ones here since our warehouse is only about 2,000 square feet. So we looked up online and found Tom's guide for their very in-depth test using iX Chariot software. Their conclusion, the Netgear Orbi was consistently faster than other home mesh Wi-Fi systems while trading places with the Lynx's Velop at the top of the leaderboard based on the various scenarios they tested. 
tested. And from our numbers in the studio doing internet speed tests and file transfers, the Orbi is just as fast as other high-end routers. So where does that leave us in our conclusion? Well, the Netgear Orbi is one of the best ways we've seen to easily add Wi-Fi to a large home. The units are very easy to set up, they offer a large range, great speeds, and it's very easy to expand in the future. The Orbi also supports all of the features that we've come to expect on a high-end router such as QoS prioritization, VPN integration, port forwarding, static IP assignment, guest networks, and even Amazon Alexa integration. But we're in Canada, so unfortunately that doesn't work here. But you can watch their cool video down below and they show you how it works and it's pretty awesome and I wish we could test it. But we can't, because Canada. The Orbi kits range from $299 to $499 depending on the range you need and how many satellites you want, which puts it on the higher side of router prices. However, we think it's a fair price considering how easy it is to set up and not having to deal with the frustration of traditional range extenders. But ultimately, it's up to you and your needs if you want to spend the extra money on this. But if you are interested, the link is up here. All right, that wraps up our episode on Mesh Wi-Fi. Thank you for watching and click over here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment down below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIS. Now I have to sit here. <laughs> Bye.